Okay, so welcome back to another video. So here we have a nice limit, an interesting limit as um, one would add. We have the limit as x approaches infinity of, so inside of our quantity we have 4 over 3 to the power 1 over x minus 7 over 4 to the power 1 over x plus 9 divided by 7 to the power 1 over x, all of that quantity to the power x. So if you indeed were to take this limit on its own without having to do any sort of manipulation, we have something of, so exponent 0, 0, 0, 1 over infinity approaches 0. So what this yields is we have something of a 1 to the power infinity of an indeterminate form. So that's not the answer you will want to get your that value into. So you might be asking, how can we actually, you know, evaluate this such limit so it's not in an indeterminate form? So of course, you'll see this, um, you'll see this trick a lot that in a lot of calculus courses, well, really the introductory course is that assuming that, of course, the value does exist, it's continuous, you want to actually take the logarithm of both sides. And so that actually yields such that if you use that property, we would, the first step, of course, afterwards is move that x in front of the natural log function. But that also raises another question because it's actually in some form of a polynomial rather than a rational function. So how can we actually convert that? Well, if that being the case, if we can actually get into some rational function, then of course, if, of course, indeed, if we were to take that limit again a second time, and it does indeed result in yet another indeterminate form, well, L'Hopital's rule is your friend to actually, you know, evaluate such integral or such limit. <laughs> I, I, I evaluate too many integrals. <laughs> so, yep. So that's pretty much the takeaway and the steps are what we're going to do to evaluate such limit is, of course, L'Hopital's rule is the main important key to, you know, utilize here. And this one's actually a whole lot of things going on that especially if you've seen the um, when you take a derivative of some exponential function, specifically a number is your base and the exponent is your variable, then that's actually, you know, the key component to utilize there. But this one's going to be a little bit interesting as we have an exponent of a rational, you know, function. So I'm kind of uh, wandering too much off it, but I'm, I give you basically the main components on what's the outlines of this video. So why don't we actually just jump right in? So let me call this L, we'll call that our given um, limit that we want to calculate. So if that does some continuity, if it's the function is itself is continuous and that the value does exist, let's actually take the natural log of both sides. So I have the natural log of L. So ln of L is equal to the limit as x approaches infinity. And if I take that natural um, log of this entire thing, the exponent x is going to move to the front. So I have x and then multiply by the natural log of this entire thing over here. So 4 over 3 to the power 1 over x, subtract 7 over 4 to the power 1 over x, and then add this with 9 divided by 7 to the power 1 over x. Okay, and so, of course, if we were to take this limit, then uh, this result is going to, yet again, in, result in some indeterminate form, but it's not that we can get any sort of conclusion out of it. So as mentioned, let's actually change this up to a rational function. So the limit as x approaches infinity. So our numerator is actually going to be this natural log function on the top. So 4 over 3 and then 1 over x minus 7 over 4. Uh, to the power 1 over x and then plus 9 divided by 7 to the power 1 over x and then our denominator is we're going to let that x move to the bottom but that would rewrite that as the same thing as 1 divided by x on the bottom now as you notice that if i were to take this entire limit yet again so on the denominator that's going to approach zero and then if i were to take the limit for the numerator so zero 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 so that means one minus one is zero and then add this with one and one and one of one is of course going to be zero so there we have it our indeterminate form so utilizing l'hopital's rule we can actually now take the derivative of both our numerator and denominator so let's actually do that so i'm actually gonna um put this over here so well actually i'll just write the same thing so the limit as x approaches infinity so we have our derivative over here that we need to take so ln 4 over 3 and then 1 over x so i'm basically just saying the same thing so let me just cut to the next clip Okay, so we have our derivatives that we need to calculate. Obviously, the denominator is pretty easy to do since you just applied the quotient rule. That's just going to be negative 1 divided by x squared on the bottom. Now, the numerator is um, quite an interesting one. So let me actually write a little key thing for here. As mentioned, the exponential, um, the, um, exponential um, derivative that we're finding. So d dx for some some constant a to the power x we know that that's actually just going to equal to a to the power x and then multiply by that one of a 
Now keep in mind that uh, if this is just an x on the exponent, what could it be a different variable? Well, we actually have to multiply our derivative of what's on the exponent as well. Since as we notice, we have a one over x, so we actually have to keep this in mind. And also if um, a is gonna be, uh, of course, strictly greater than zero, that's our constant for to satisfy that following. So continuing forward, so now we actually take our derivative for both the numerator and denominator. Denominator is pretty self-explanatory. So now we actually have to calculate our derivative of the numerator. So let's see, we have the, um, the natural log of this entire thing. I'm missing one more um, form of parentheses over here. There we go. That's better. Okay. And so that's the natural log. So we know that the derivative of the natural log is one divided by what's in the quantity. And then you take the derivative of inside of that as well. So what that yields to, so um, let's actually first put calculate our derivative for the numerator. So four over three to the power of one over X, we just utilize that rules over here. So four divided by three to the power of one over X and then ln of four over three, but then don't forget to take the derivative of our exponent, which is um, negative one divided by x squared. And this actually follows the same thing over here. They're actually gonna share the same thing for the derivative for the exponent. So afterwards, that's actually just gonna go into the denominator of our um, this inside input over here. So putting everything back together, so it's a negative, and then that'll change the negatives as well because from the derivative as well. So what we have now is um, putting everything back together and simplifying it. So well, not simplifying just yet. Let's just, writ just write down what we have so far. So I have the negative natural log of, so four over three, and then multiply by four over three to the power of one over X. Then add this with the natural log of seven over four, multiply by seven over four to the power of one over X, and then subtract the natural log of nine over seven, multiply with nine over seven to the power of one over X, and then under our denominator from taking this derivative is what I mean to say is that we're going to have this is going to be so and also x squared falls from here. So that's actually going to move that to the bottom as well. So x squared and then multiply with so everything is the input. So four over three, then to the power of one over x, subtract seven over four to the power of one over x, and then add this with nine over seven to the power of one over x. Okay. And so that's just the numerator itself. So now under all this is of course, just calculating derivative of this. We know that that's just gonna be negative uh, one divided by X squared. Okay, so that's a lot to input, but that's okay because there's some things that we can simplify. So for one, the X squares are actually going to cancel because you do the division, you basically just flip, flip the reciprocal. So that X squared is gonna be on the numerator, this thing here, that'll cancel out. And then also another thing, what I'm gonna change up is we have a negative and a negative. I'm gonna make everything positive here. So meaning that the negative goes inside of our um, input for four over three, we just flip the reciprocal. So then that will be um, three over four over here and then seven over nine over here. So now we just put everything back together just like that. And so we have that this is gonna equal to the limit as X approaches infinity. And we still have that negative over here. So what I'm gonna do is I'll write the negative and then, imp and then denote the parentheses for everything Thing that we just changed for our numerator over here. So now I have the natural log of three over four, then multiply with four over three to the power one over X. Um, now add this with the natural log of seven over four and then multiply by seven over four to the power one over X. Then I have now positive the natural log of seven over nine and then multiply with nine over seven to the power one over X. Okay, close that off. And then our denominator is still just gonna be this entire thing in here. So now four over three, uh, one over X, and then subtract seven over four to the power of one over X. And then now add this with nine over seven to the power of one over X. Okay, and so this actually makes things a little bit easier because now that we actually take our limit, it's not going to result in a indeterminate form. So now taking this limit right now, what we're gonna have is, so now, next is negative so if i take the um so if i take as x approaches infinity so of course one over infinity is going to approach zero so anything associated with that exponent is actually just going to yield with just one so now what we have is so let's see the natural log of three over four then times one then add this with the natural log of seven over four then times one and then add this with the natural log of seven over nine and then times one okay and then our, under our denominator is gonna be four over three, 
So let's see, that's gonna approach zero. So that means it's gonna be a one, subtract one, and then add this with one. Okay, so basically what's left is this is gonna be negative and then applying the natural law properties, everything is with addition. So that means it's multiplying for all the inputs. So negative, the natural log of three over four multiplied by seven over four and then multiplied by seven over nine, which is going to yield us with negative, the natural log of 147 divided by 144 and we can actually reduce this as the negative um, natural log of 49 divided by 48 which move the negative back inside so that's going to flip the reciprocal so i have the natural log of 48 over 49 and keep in mind that everything we saw for so far is actually just equal to the natural log of l where l is this thing we want to solve for like uh, for the entire time we just take the e base and so therefore l is simply just going to equal to 48 divided by 49. That's our final answer to this crazy limit over here resulting um, using everything from L'Hopital's rule and then the exponents for um, our, where our, where our base is the constant and then the exponent resulting in everything over here that as you see, which um, it's uh, pretty, pretty nifty if you ask me. So yeah, that's uh, pretty cool if you ask me.